Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. The session today is going to be probably shorter than the other ones, but it's something that I would like to share with you after discussions that I had with my colleagues and, and even from teachers from other schools. There is this typical discussion about to what extent are we all language teachers and, and, and how can we, no matter what the subject teach, support the development of language in our own subject. So it's just a question for us to discuss and I will try to come up with some examples that show evidence on why are we all language teachers, no matter what the subject we teach. So how can we empower English language learners or learners from any language that we use as a communication tool. So we need to understand that whatever the topic we teach, the process, the code that we use to transmit information is the language. And then we're responsible for the development of the language across the subjects in all the topics. So then I've taken this um, nice infographic from the website that you can see at the bottom and I would like to concentrate in two of these three tips and ideas. The first one, build a community, is not something that I'm going to focus on because it's obvious, isn't it, that if we are all able to work in a professional learning community and collaborate with each other, then basically we will have these links created with the language teachers and we will have their input in terms of supporting language learners in class. Now let me focus on the, on the connection between content and language and the design for the use of language with some examples that I can come and I would love to share with you to have your opinion and your idea on it. So we're going to focus this session in these two, in these two bits. Um, first of all, trying to see how and what are the strategies or some strategies that can be used to connect content and language. And then we're going to share a couple of them. Uh, and, and basically, how can we then uh, provide instructions, plan and design for these EAL students to be successful in our classrooms with some teaching strategies. Yeah, so we're going to see that the first bit that I would like to share with you is the connection between the content taught and the language. So what I'm trying to see is how can we use the language to contextualize the learning process. Uh, we've mentioned many times the importance of giving context to the learning, giving meaning and making sure that students understand uh, the reason why they are learning certain topics across the subjects. So it's important for us to be able to integrate the language of instruction around the subject specific topics and how this language is being used to deepen understanding and to make sure students can follow and can access the topic covered. Um, how can we do that? Well, we can, we can try to make links between the language objectives and the content objectives. And I invite you to reflect and to look back to your units and look at the objectives of the unit and try to think, are my objectives purely subject-based? Do I have any language objective into my lesson objectives? Now, the language objectives can be explicit or can be implicit. If they're explicit, we're going to write. The objectives in terms of language will be for you to develop certain vocabulary skills or getting to know or be familiar with technical vocabulary from the subject. That can be one. Uh, that's an explicit example. An implicit example is when we're going to use, for example, certain command terms like, um, as an example, um, for this unit, you're expected to analyze certain sources. You're expected to explain the reasons why something. You're expected to understand certain things. So by using those command terms in your lesson objectives, you are implicitly bringing the language into your uh, lesson. And then you can also, for example, connect content and language by creating interdisciplinary projects, interdisciplinary links. When you have the language teachers of your school, being language and literature, being language acquisition, collaborating with you in the, planific in the planification of a unit and in the precise task or project. So basically, I would like to invite you to think to what extent you swear on. To what extent in your lessons, you use the speaking, the writing, the interacting, the reading and the listening. And you do, we do all use, we all swear in our classes, but are we aware of that? And if we are, how explicit is the use of language? 
So basically what is important to see is that in order for the English, for the language learners to develop academically or the academic language, they must be exposed to subject specific topics or concepts or skills. And those must be, must be directly linked to um, uh, the content taught. Let me see some examples. And this is a document that can be produced by any of you just by having a discussion with your teams, with your vertical teams, trying to have a discussion with teachers across the subjects so they can brainstorm on different ways and examples in which language is explicitly taught in class. So look at that. For example, in sciences, how do they read, write or think? And, and then you will have the science teacher realizing little by little of, oh yeah, then um, actually in science the students interpret data and charts and they look for understanding and they look for the validity of sources and they pay attention to details. Uh, maybe they will use more the why than the what. Yeah, and when they write, we expect them to use precise vocabulary with some evidence, some examples. We expect them to compose sentences which are short, specific, exact. We don't want long sentences. We don't want them to elaborate like they will in history. Um, and we want them to think, to use curiosity, to consider and analyze hypotheses. So in this discussion, little by little, science teachers realize that on top of the content taught, which is subject specific, they are also expecting students to have language abilities and language skills. And they will then be able to enter in a conversation on how, even if they are science teachers, they are at the same time language teachers. The same thing happens with history and geography teachers. And you will probably see history is a very heavy, uh, language heavy uh, subject, and they need to create narratives. They need to analyze primary and secondary sources and interpret the sources. They need to compare and contrast, uh, determine hidden messages, the meaning, create essays, bring in multiple ideas. So all these are specific aspects from history and geography which are not based on the subject-specific content but in the use of language of the students. And if we don't support the students in the development of those skills, they will never be successful in our subject. Let's see this example of mathematics and, and the arts and languages and, and the source from which I got this idea. Yeah, Even mathematics, which sometimes we tend to think that is not a, a language heavy subject and, and, and the language is not that specific. But, but look, um, when mathematicians uh, um, read or when they think or, or when they, they, they reflect or when they write, yeah, uh, they ask questions, they use specific vocabulary, using real world situations. If a student wants to work on percentages, he can probably work in, on a cooking book. So he needs to understand what he's reading. He needs to be able to make a link between a mathematical calculation and a real life situation which is presented to him in a, in a, in a written form. They need to find connections, look for patterns, um, using principles, uh, using previous understanding. So language is also very pr present in, in maths lessons. And of course, what can I say about languages and arts? The creativity, the creative side of things, um, the idea of bringing ideas, arguing, discussing, asking questions, argumenting, elaborating. So I think one of the ways to connect subject specific with language objectives is through just realizing that this is happening already. But sometimes teachers are not aware of the fact that they are teaching language, but in a way which is not explicit enough. And I think that by inviting them to reflect on it is a big step forward into the realization that we are all language teachers. Now, let's try to talk about planification now and how can we design the use of language. There are some <clears throat> basic points that need to be taken into consideration. The first one is provide time to talk. Give students the time to talk in class. And this talking can happen in many ways. We can use translanguaging strategies. For example, we can allow students to use their mother tongue when they're discussing. So when they reflect their input, however, expect them to use the target, <clears throat> sorry, the target language when they're presenting. So the output process. If you want to find out more about translanguaging, I'm inviting you to 
go to my YouTube channel and look for the session about translanguaging. It is important that all our lessons objectives are clear, verbally and in written. Clear in terms of the subject specific, clear also in terms of development of language. And it would be great if in our unit planner we could spend some time filling in a box that suggests teachers to reflect on how language is being used on that specific unit. We want to model, we want to provide examples which are clear and precise to our students in the way in which language must be used, <clears throat> in the way they should answer the questions. We should scaffold, uh, and, and the example that I'm going to give in the next slide is based on that, based on scaffolding, and how can we use the command terms depending on the level of expectation, which is also seen as a differentiation strategy for language learners and for the ones that have lower abilities in terms of language, de language development. And basically, allow for mistakes. Allow for mistakes, focus on the communication ideas and on the perfection of communication. Focus on, and I'm still talking to the language learners here, focus on the fact that they're able to communicate something effectively and that the message has been understood. So they will gain confidence and all of a sudden their language will develop step by step. So how can we, <clears throat> for example, scaffold? And this is an example that I'm using for history. Yeah, so what you have is you have, looking at the Bloom's taxonomy, you have the different levels of the command term that can be used depending on the level of expectation or the language development. So if we want to develop the language at a very lower level for grade six, grade seven, or for language learners that just arrived and the level of the target language is not developed enough, we want them only to identify or to list or to remember certain facts, not long sentences, facts, specific aspects. And little by little we can build up, isn't it? We can then, once they feel comfortable with the identifying or the listing, we can move up and go and look at the explanation, discussion, description, uh, interpretation. And then one step at a time, we're going to move up into the language expectations into the classroom. So we can teach the same topic, but for the language learners, we can adapt the type of questions that we're asking them. Based on the same topic, some students will be able to identify things or to list. Some others will be able to demonstrate. Some others will be able to synthesize. And some others will be able to justify or to investigate. We don't need to change the topic. We just need to change the way in which we ask questions and the expectations that we have from our students. By doing that, what we've just done is to bring the development of language in an explicit way into our planning and into our classrooms. We just need to make sure that this is clear in the objectives and then students understand what's expected from them. Basically, these are two ways that I think are very helpful for us to develop language and to make sure that we have evidence of the fact that we're all language learners, no matter what subject we teach. Do you have any other way of doing it? I'll be extremely happy to see you sharing the way in which you develop language in your subjects and how can you let us know. So let's share best practice in the chat. Just in case you're interested in this topic, these are the three main sources that I've used for this um, session. I hope you found it useful and looking forward to read you in the chat. Thank you.